John here from RipeWave Audio with our first Anthem product in for review and evaluation, the AVM78K. And th this was brought into the market last year, uh, towards the end of the year. And this is the upgraded model with the 8K uh, board in here for HDMI 2.1 compatibility. But before this, it was really just the AVM70 that was introduced in 2020. These are 17-channel processors that support 9.2.6 room layout configurations with your speakers. Now, as you know, we already have a couple of uh, processors and receivers in our theater, um, we can see them over here. Um, not so well the Marantz, but we have the Marantz Cinema 50, which is only a 15 channel, so two less channels than this AVM70, but its price tag is also a lot less. So the Cinema 50 comes in at $2,500, whereas the 78K is a list price of $4,000, that's $1,500 more than the Cinema 50 without amplification, uh, and so you'll have to buy external amplifiers to work with this model. But Anthem does have their MRX line that is available, and uh, so that is a choice as well. But the Cinema will do a 7.4.4 configuration layout. So it will actually support two more subwoofer discrete outputs than this Anthem AVM70. And there is the upgraded version, which is the Cinema 40. Same number of processing channels, same layout, 7.4.4, but it's going to give you Effectively, with all channels driven around 88 watts per channel versus 77, that's already applying the 70% rule that Marantz has on those amplifiers, nine channels of amplification. So more amplification, so you get another ele effective 11 watts per channel. And it has upgraded circuitry, and it's made in Japan. So some extra benefits for that Cinema 40, but you're paying a thousand dollars more for it. Now the pricing on the AVM70 has changed over the years. When it was first launched in 2020, the 4K version sold for $3,800. When they came out with the 8K version last year, they upped to $200 for $4,000 for the 8K version. However, they do have some limited time sales going on. You can actually get the $600 off at $3,400, which brings it to less than when it was introduced as a 4K model. So if you're interested in the AVM 78K, now might be a good time to jump in. But listen to this review. We're going to cover some pros and some cons that are about this and maybe help a few people make their decisions. Now, a lot of people are looking at Anthem as the step up from a Marantz uh, AVR. And uh, if you know, I want to move to processor uh, separates, the AV10 is out of my league. That You have to jump up to $7,000 to get to that. And I heard the sound quality is very good about the Anthem. This could be my next step up. However, there is, is when you look at pricing, there is some models that come in like the Emotiva RMC1L. Now, it's only 16-channel model versus a 17-channel model. Doesn't give you that third row of heights, but will do 9.3.4 configuration. So we'll, all, we'll bring in the front wides, whereas these... Marantz receivers won't do front wide configurations. You've got to go to the AV10 for that at $7,000. The RMC1L, originally introduced as a $4,000 processor in 2019, they dropped the price last year to $3,000, effectively undercutting 
Anthem and their pricing. But it does, it, not everything lines up. So you get one more subwoofer output with the Emotiva RMC-1L. Now the RMC-1 promised an upgrade board that gives you more outputs, but we haven't seen that yet. So right now, that RMC-1L um, is also a 16-channel processor, 9.3.4. Uh, I guess you could also configure these uh, as a 9.1.6, but then you're losing your subwoofer to get that third row of heights with the Emotiva. And the RMC-1, which was originally introduced at $5,000, Last year, it also got a price reduction down to 3750 So Emotiva bucking the trend where everybody else is raising prices. They have lowered prices. And again, the regular price of the Anthem is more than the RMC-1 uh, top-line processor for, from Emotiva. Again, there might be other reasons why you choose one or the other. But these are definitely the same price point for consideration against each other. And I think they make for a good head-to-head -head competition. Now, you also have the AVM90, but like the Marantz AV10 processor, that jumps up over $7,000. Originally introduced as a 4K unit in 2020 at $7,000, is now at $7,500 with the AK board, the 4K one is no longer available, but that's 19 channels like the AV10. It will do up to a 9.4.6 configuration, just like the AV10. So that Anthem AVM90 8K goes head to head with the Marantz AV10 as far as the speaker layouts it's looking for, and they're both in about the same price point uh, albeit Anthem is $500 more at $7,500. But let's get into this model here and what I like and what I don't like on this unit uh, with the first glance. In this review, we are not getting into Anthem Arc, but that comes standard with the AVM70 as it does with all these receivers and processors from Anthem. Now, um, I won't turn this around the back now because I got it all wired up, but I'll show you a picture of it. Looking at the back, now one difference you get with something like the Anthem versus the Emotiva is both balanced and unbalanced connections versus the Emotiva are only balanced connections. And it hasn't been a big deal because I just get a cable that goes from balanced to unbalanced and I can connect it up to an unbalanced amplifier should I choose or, or have to do that. Uh, but one thing that I find a little harder to deal with is how they've arranged the preamp outputs on this. It goes front, right, left, center. Surround, right, left, back, right, left. And it's going right, left, right, left. And they got all the balanced stuff grouped together, and they've got all the unbalanced grouped together. But I just find that something like the way Emotiva's done it, where you're logically got all your left on one side and all your right on one side, or I've seen other companies, even if they're not doing that, they put the balance connections right next to the unbalanced, and that makes it a lot easier. Now. Anthem isn't alone in the way they do this layout. I just prefer that other style where you can more easily match up. And I think they go from the most common to uncommon the way they've arranged this. So they go front, center, surround. So that's your standard five channel layout. Then they go surround back. That's your set, uh, seven channel layout. Then they go to wides. That's your nine channel layout. Then they bring in the two subwoofers, although a subwoofer, you might ar argue, should become bef before front wide. And then they've got the three rows of heights, height one, height two, and height three. Now, what I find is I only have two rows of heights. 
but I don't have a middle, so my heights are front and rear. So when, when I wire this up, I did not wire height twos, but I wired height one and height three, and that's how it's, it works out uh, for my particular configuration with only four ceiling speakers. And the rest of this is pretty good. They give you uh, four uh, analog inputs, unbalanced, no balanced inputs. So that's one thing that the Emotiva is giving me is it gives me that balanced input. The Marantz isn't going to give you a balanced input until you go up to something like the AV10 processor. And the AVM90 doesn't give you a balanced input. So that's one thing that Anthem has not addressed is any sort of balanced input. So for, for our long-term use on this, unless this has really superior sound quality, this isn't going to stay in our theater for too long because I want that balanced input at this level of product. And the other thing it's lacking is DSD support. And the Emotiva gives me the DSD support. So should these both be equivalent in their sound quality, I'll have to stick with the Emotiva because I need the balanced and the DSD support. Now I have plugged this in and I have listened to it for a bit. I found setting up the speaker distances and the uh, levels very easy to do through the front menu. Uh, what you will notice though is that the on-screen display is extremely basic. And the other thing that you'll notice is, so here I pulled up input. I'm going to lean back here a little bit. I pulled up input, and it says input select HDMI 2. So I've got that. So I want to go to HDMI 1. So what I have to do is I'll hit the back arrow and hit select. That is three button pushes on the Anthem remote to switch an input. I found that navigation really um, too much. I want to have at least a few buttons where I can go input one, input two, input three directly on the remote. And that's what I get on the Emotiva. And I also get it on the Marant Cinema 50 remote, direct access to the source that I want. This navigation of your input, I find cumbersome. So, uh, and it's replicated here on the way they do the front panel. So if I go and hit the, the input select button, they give you a nice graphic. I like that. And I can use now the wheel to switch between HDMI 1, 2, 3. I mean, this is kind of slick, right? But I have to cycle through all of these uh, if I want to go up to seven, for example. And let's, okay, but in this case, I am going to go and select one. Now I'm on one, but I have to hit that select button. This is not a button. I have to hit the select button. So if I want to go back to two, I hit the input here, HMA one, two, select. I've noticed there's a little bit of delay here, maybe about five seconds. I'm going to do some further analysis on this. I know this is a general problem with receivers and processors, with HDMI, the switching between sources, even with the HDMI 2.1, can be slow. It would be neat to do a test between the Marantz, the Emotiva, and the Anthem to see who's the fastest on switching between HDMI 1 and 2 if given the same sources. So the jury's still out on that one. The next thing I wanted to um, cover is, this will surprise me, this has a fan in it. I didn't know it had a fan, and I wasn't expecting it to have a fan, I don't think. Uh, I heard that the, the receiver versions did have a fan with its built-in amplification. You know, one can as assume it there's a good chance of having a fan. Processors are less likely to have a fan, but I knew this had one when I could hear it.
you know, it's kind of that projector like, if you remember film projectors, the clickety clickety, um, although it's not quite as pronounced as that, but you can hear it. And I find that would be disturbing to me in, in my theater environment to have that, that audible fan going. One of the things that you notice right away when you take this out of the box is this is the documentation that's printed and given to you. A quick start guide. Shows you how to use the remote control, um, to do some basic connections, and to set up your Ethernet network and the Anthem web user interface by going to, to its web page, the front panel and all that. But what they do is they direct you to their online documentation so you can download the PDF. And I find that disappointing. I like having a printed manual for this type of thing. You've paid over $3,000 for a good piece of electronics and you don't have a printed manual. I, re I pull up that RMC one all the time. Nice spiral bound. I like the way they do it. It lays flat, easy to read. But the other thing is, okay, if you can get over not having printing, and I know it could be considered an environmental advantage, is the digital version is shared with multiple products. Not just the AVM90, but the receivers. You're not even getting a dedicated manual. And then the details aren't detailed enough. I, it, it doesn't really cover uh, Anthem Arc, uh, Anthem Room uh, Correction in any detail. It's, it, it points you then on to something else. And, and there's a few other areas where it's, it's pretty light. And it doesn't cover all the speaker configurations. It stops at, uh, I don't think it covers front wides in its layout. So not detailed enough on the manual. The next thing I want to mention is this remote. This remote is interesting. I look at it. It's the, actually the same shape as something I had on a Samsung TV back in 2006. So I, they probably outsource the remotes to some company that then just silk screens and puts the buttons on you want. But what I said before, the input is just an input button which brings up this and then you've got to cycle through the input you want to go to the next one. I can do that, but other people in my house would struggle with that. So that's a problem. But it does have a backlight. You have to push this button here. You have to know where the backlight is. Versus on the Marantz, I got this button on the side and it's, it's quite easy to get to it. Although I think the Anthem lights up a little brighter. No backlight on this, but I think Emotive is working on backlit remotes. I think they got the message. Those are the cons that I've gathered so far. Pros, out of the box, simply setting speaker distances and levels, the sound quality is good. I, and I, I wasn't disappointed the way this sounds, and I haven't even run the room correction software. That's coming in a future video. Having 17 channels versus 16, that l extra one makes a big difference because you've got that if you need the third row of ceiling speakers, you've got it. But if you're doing more than two subwoofers and you want to be able to handle those independently, with an Anthem product, you've got to go up to the AVM90 at $7,500. Versus the Cinema 50, as a receiver, I got independent subwoofer outputs for four. And the Emotiva is right in between with three. The other thing is the custom profiles and inputs. So when you're setting up an input, you can decide what the name of the input's going to be, what the video, what the audio is going to be, what zone two is going to do, whether you're going to run analog through the processing or turn off everything, in, including ARC for like your 
two-channel phonograph li listening. You've got four speaker profiles versus two on a lot of models. Uh, so you have two speaker profiles on the Marantz Cinema 50, albeit one of them could be used for, uh, for Odyssey with two filters and the other one for Dirac with three, so maybe you have essentially five, but there's four profiles in this one, which is good. Uh, ability to, on these input selections, whether the anthem's gonna be on or off. Uh, are you gonna use Dolby Audio post-processing for music, movie, night, or just turn them off? Then they have their own mode presets, which is Anthem Logic, which does an up mixing, sort of like Dolby Surround and DTS Neural X, but they have their Anthem Logic, and they have a version for cinema and a version for music, but they also support Dolby Surround for up mixing as well. For you Oral 3D lovers, there's no Oral 3D. There's no Oral 3D in the Emotiva, and we don't hear of any plans to add it. Now, when this first went on, their website, the 4K version, in 2020, they advertised that they were gonna have DTSX Pro. They have since removed that from the website, and I don't think there's any signs uh, that they are going to add that. So as of right now, no DTSX Pro. And then also on the input setup, you can also put lip sync, delay, and trim your inputs so you can balance out your inputs. So I like the flexibility they have on these profiles, on these input setups, and you can create custom inputs. So they start you off with an input for every input channel on the back of this, but then you can come up with extra ones or delete ones. That's really cool, but I think that in a way has, um, they went too far with not at least having like HDMI one through six buttons right on the remote. This navigation, they've got to work on that. So I do like that as a pro. It starts up pretty quickly. So if I were to shut this down, it goes and powers down, it's off, right? Quick shutdown, and I'm gonna put it back on. It comes up, it almost looks like a win Windows logo here. Powering on. Up, it's, it's pretty fast. Saying no signal, I'm gonna turn on my DVD player again. Everything times out after a while. So it comes up fast. It's got a nice looking display. I can show the input or I can hide the input there. So I can hit this brightness button here, and I think, oh wait a second, the info button. So the info button here will hide HDMI 2. The other neat thing is it does come with the calibration mic. With the Marantz Cinema 50, you get the Odyssey calibration mic, but not the Dirac mic. That you have to go out and get something like a UMIC. I happen to have one. The other good thing is this microphone is serialized, so it's calibrated for this specific one and not just a whole batch. So that's good. This connects through USB to your computer. It comes with a tripod. I haven't taken this out because I'm not going to use this. Yes, this is better than the rocket ship. Well, I like about here is they've got this arm in here and it comes out, and when you do the... Um, arc calibration the way I understand it. You do one at the listening position and then you do four in an X cross pattern. That's pretty standard with, with Anthem is five measurements. You can go up to nine measurements, maybe 10 is it? Uh, I can't find the documentation that really describes beyond five. They all talk about f five measurements. But the problem with a short tripod, you gotta rest it on your couch or something else. And the couches are wobbly. I might rather just use 
this type of stand where I can suspend the microphone right over each position exactly in a nice firm way. Not balance it on a, a couch or a theater chair that isn't um, stable. It's not level. But it's better than rocket ship. So to, what's, what I'm still looking to, to get into is, you know, Anthem Arc, how good that is compared to Dirac, Odyssey. Um, the mobile app. I haven't got into that. I've got to do a firmware update on this. It's still shipping with the firmware that it came with. I'm going to do that next. And the wireless and the streaming capabilities. Those will come in subsequent videos. But what I, what I will do for you now is let's try the update. And we'll do this. And what you'll come to learn is they really don't have you do the on-screen stuff like other companies. They have you do this. And then once I get the, the mobile app on, perhaps through the mobile app, but not on screen. So I go on here, the main menu, and I am going to scroll down here to system info. I'm going to select that. And I see the release version here is HD.61. The build date here is June 30th, 2021. That sounds old to me. We're two years ahead of that, uh, et cetera. And they've got some other things listed here. There's 12 different versions. The DTS version, 3.9. The IMAX version, 390, et cetera. OSD version, ARC, serial numbers, et cetera. Let's do the update. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this screen. So the system info gives you the current version of the firmware, et cetera. But I believe we have to go up to store load update. So I'm going to select that one. And I'm going to check for update. Um, these are user settings. I mean, I suppose I could do all that store. So the user settings are stored. Uh, before I do any update, I think that's always a good idea. And then you can refret set to factory defaults and everything. But let's just go in now and check for update. It says update in progress. Please wait. It's doing a DSP update. Press next to say store load update. Press next to select. This seems to be a little glitchy here. I think I'm getting a progress bar here on the install, but it's not really refreshing the display in the correct way. So I'm just going to stand back and let it do its thing and try to be patient. Looks like it's getting near the end here. Still have all this other text there. Okay, that progress bar finished. Now it's doing LCD flash update. And it's going through another progress bar saying writing. This seems to be moving a little faster. Getting done with the LCD flash. Please wait, writing, and now it says MCU flash update. Now it's doing an LCD update. Now we finally got the uh, screen to display uh, normal. I guess maybe that's part of the update where uh, as it goes along, it's correcting some of these things from that initial uh, firmware. I was surprised how, how old the firmware was on this unit because it's older than the 8K uh, release. So what they probably did is had some units built up 
and then they swapped out the 4K belt board with the 8K board, but the firmware was the same. But didn't bother updating the firmware at the factory. And it just restarted. It's saying erasing and now writing. Going through another power cycle. Saying powering on. And I think it's complete at this point. Let me give the indication it is. Let's go now and go into the menu. System info. Select. This says HD. 76 now it says December 8th 2022 so it definitely um, went up and these are the versions that we have now for each of these other things okay now that takes us through the update. We successfully updated to the new version. Uh, when we come back and then in a subsequent video, we'll go over Anthem Arc. We'll go over some of the uh, applications and the web pages. And we'll get to see how the software works. And ultimately, it comes down to the performance and how this sounds. And that's what we'll be uh, judging this uh, unit ultimately by. But it is a, you know, it does come across as a, as a high quality product. There are some features we wish they could have done better on. Um, but overall, this is still a very good unit. And I think it's the perfect solution for those that are looking for the right combination of features, speaker layout support, and a good sounding processor separate. Uh, this could be the processor that is right. I'll mention a couple of things that I didn't mention earlier. One is the feel of this knob is very nice. It's got a nice smooth feel to it, some, some friction to it. And it has a quarter inch headphone jack, which we always like to see. I wish the Emotiva had a quarter inch uh, headphone jack. So what are your thoughts on this Anthem AVM70? Uh, does it have the right combination of features for you? Does some of its quirks uh, cause you to pause and maybe uh, think about a, a different model, a different brand uh, for handling this level of, of, of uh, layout, like a 9.2.4 or 9.2.6 configuration? Uh, would you go to something else or would you stay with this? Now, I know we haven't mentioned th something like the, the Monolift HTP-1, but that hasn't been available for some time, so we're really not discussing it at this point, and hopefully Monolith can come back with something. And I also believe that they, they are coming out with a revised model. Time will tell. But as far as this type of processor separate at this price point, do you think it does the job? That feedback would be useful to the RipeWave audio community. And if you want to take your involvement to the next level, there is always our Patreon channel at www.patreon.com slash RipeWave. You can hit that one-time donation button, the thanks button. That would be appreciated. Help us uh, keep going here and bring in more products for evaluation. And... As always, you can hit that bell notification so you're informed when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.